1 Corinthians 1, 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised, God hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, through Christ Jesus, has made us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. Today we're going to be talking about uh, my a testimony and experience and to help the brethren when it comes to dealing with the Yahweh, Yeshua, Yahashua, uh, Jesus Christ rejectors. Okay. They're trying to use the wisdom of this world, and they're doing everything they can to replace the name Jesus Christ. They're doing everything they can. Okay. Turn to Matthew 12, 37. I want to show you, uh, I had a discussion in the comment section of my one of my videos. I think it was uh, the name above all names. When we're going through this, the uh, old hymn, Jesus, name above all names. And I'm trying to warn the brethren that, hey... Go through some of the hymns that you sing and make sure they line up with the scriptures. And I'm giving an example. I'm not saying I'm going to be going through a million different hymns. Every single hymn out there. I'm trying to set the example, Brother Sis Christ, for you to go through the hymns. Some word studies. I remember I did one word study on uh, being. B-E-I-N-G. Because some people are saying it's God and one being. Yet being is not a replacement for the word person. Being doesn't even mean the same thing as person. Okay, being doesn't mean body, soul, and spirit. Okay, we did a study on this. It, it links two words together. It'll link a person with something, but being's in the middle, and it links the two things. But being itself is not a replacement for person. So I said, hey, here, we're going to start a word study. And, um, and we started it. And went through it a little bit, and I said, let's see you guys finish it, Brother Sister Christ. Let's see you guys. I, I want to see you guys stay in the Word of God. Almost like homework. Stay in the Word of God. And very few brethren actually did the study. I had one uh, talk to me, and we talked on Skype for an hour or two about it and everything. Um, it was great to, to, to see that some of the brethren are actually listening to the studies and continuing the studies on their own. Okay, that's what I want. This is what I want for your final authority. And this is going to be our final authority today. And right today we're going to be talking about somebody who, who claims to believe in this book, but is trying to take this book from you. This book isn't their final authority. I don't want this guy right here being the final authority. I don't want people starting to worship this guy. I don't want people starting to hold me above the Word of God. I've seen so many men out there that I love. I believe that they're brothers in Christ get into ministry, and they get so puffed up, so ego-driven, so prideful, they think they're the final authority. They went from having the same attitude I have, that this is the final authority, but now they start acting like, this guy here is the final authority. They are the final authority. And you know what? Those of us can see right through them, they'll still claim, this is my final authority. But they go against it. And when they go against it, who are you supposed to listen to? This... Or them. I'm pointing at me like me. If I'm going against this book, what do you listen to? The book? Or me? You listen to the book. You listen to God. Right? This is what I want you to have. So we're gonna if you make sure you have your King James Bibles out. But I said in this the study I did about Jesus' name above all names, I said that it's not Yeshua, it's not Yahashua. Okay? It's not uh, Yahweh, it's Jesus Christ. That's the name that's above all names. And then I got a guy on there. I don't even, I'm getting ahead of myself. So turn to Matthew 12, 37. In these comments, my experience, my experience, you just quote scripture to them. And that's what I did. You just quote scripture to them and watch them fall flat on their face. Uh, Matthew 12, 37. Turn to Matthew 12, verse 37. 
You see here that it, see, it reads, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You know what? I just used a lot of scripture when I disproved uh, the Christmas tree and Christmas and uh, Brother Brian at uh, it's Born Again Barbarian. Uh, I just I disproved him with uh, the truth. I used the Word of God to disprove his pagan holiday, his lowercase g gods, his worldliness, his perverting the uh, liberty in the Bible to justify all that. And when push came to shove, his true self came out. He wasn't doing it for God, he's doing it for himself. He wasn't doing it for God, he's doing it for his son, for his wife. Okay, when you back someone in the corner with scripture, Tim at AVB TV, when I caught him playing a very wicked, wicked video game, not just an innocent one, oh, there's some innocent ones. I caught him playing a wicked, wicked video game. And I backed him into the corner, and all I typed in the comments was scripture, the word of God. And it upset the man. But the Brian, I just proved it through scripture, through a lot of scripture, 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 scripture at him, and he got offended by the scriptures. He got offended by the truth. Tim got offended. Um, the false, uh, the people who push, therefore I was pushing a false gospel, the easy believism. I throw scripture, scripture, showing how repentance is part of salvation. You can't find salvation. Repentance to salvation. You can't find salvation without going through repentance. You can't find salvation. They, they like the faith part, the head belief, that you can't go, find salvation without going through faith. For the, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Unto salvation. This was the Robert Breaker rights that were really fighting me on this. Um, and then it talks about, um, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession, confession is made unto salvation. Prayer comes before salvation. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I quoted scripture, and the more I quoted scripture to him, brother says Christ, the more upset they got. As we go through this, my best advice to you, brother says Christ, is this. When, so, when you have a disagreement with someone, let's say it's a brother in Christ, like I have. I've had disagreements with brothers in Christ. Uh, you use this. If you have a disagreement with someone who professes to be a brother in Christ, I'm saved, I'm one of you. You start out with this. And when they, and when they, you realize, hey, something's not right with this person. Stop with the overall Word of God and stick with just the Gospel that's in the Word of God. Give them the Gospel. Okay. And then, I'm getting ahead of myself. The last one of the verses we're going to do is let them alone. Right? Give them the truth. They don't want the truth. When you realize they don't want the truth, let them alone. So there's the Robert Breaker group when you're trying to preach the true plan of salvation. Uh, there was the Godhead versus the Trinity group. The people who wanted their pagan trinity wouldn't let it go. Wouldn't let it go. You quote scripture after scripture proving that the Godhead is God and the person of Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ is has three parts. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Godhead is God in the person of Jesus Christ. There's only one capital G God, the Father. The soul of the Godhead is God. It's not God in three parts. It's God in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus has three parts. He has a body, soul, and spirit. Soul is God the Father. The body is the Son of God. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God. Notice how the Spirit of God it always links back to the soul. Son of God always links back to God the Father, the soul. It's a whole other study. But the point is, is, I just throw scripture at them. And they get so frustrated because they're, they were adding to the Word of God a lot. They're subtracting from the Word of God a lot. They're PWCing, Polly won a cracker. Okay, what somebody else said that they highly respect, you know, the respecter of persons, they hold some men up really high, and no matter what he says, even if it goes against this, they follow him and not the word of God. Okay, you got pride that comes in, you have bitterness, you got hate, you've got the lust of the flesh. All these things come in and try to get you away from this, the lust of the flesh. Okay, the world. Satan, the three enemies, they come in and try to get you away from this. 
That verse we just read, For by thy word thou shalt be justified. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When you're trying to justify your faith, when you try to justify your actions, how you're living your life for Jesus Christ, this is how you do it. Thy words better line up with this book. Because this book's what you're supposed to be hiding in your heart and living it. Or by thy words thou shalt be condemned. When your words don't line up with this book, it lines up with the flesh, with the world, with Satan and his way. Oh boy, thou shalt be uh, condemned. Your true self's going to come out. Are you truly a Bible believer? Have you fallen away? Maybe you were a Bible believer and you've fallen away. Are you truly a Bible believer? Okay. Matthew 7, 16. Matthew 7, 16. Verse 15. We'll go back to 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Once again, I'm one of you. I'm one of you. I'm just like you. See? See, I'm a sheep. But they're a wolf in sheep's clothing. They're a false prophet. Beware of false prophets. But inward, inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Sorry to get a little warm. It was really cold this morning. Really cold this morning. Um, raven you shall know them by the fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Now don't, people try to misuse this. I'm not, this, not, not preaching sinless perfection. Can you still fail the Lord and sin as a brother or sister in Christ, as someone who is saved? Yes, you can fail the Lord. But you're not going to bring forth evil fruit. What does the Bible say? We're supposed to hate evil. Eschew evil. Okay? We might fail the Lord sometimes, but our heartfelt desire is to please Him, not to fail Him. Our heartfelt desire, our heart says, I hate evil and I love good. Remember what Jesus said? He wasn't saying, Jesus wasn't saying, I'm not good. He was saying, there's none good but God. Okay. God the Father, he's under the Old Testament. God the Father. But God the Father is in Jesus. They are one, therefore Jesus is good. But remember he said, there's nothing good but God the Father. There's none that's good. You're to hate evil and to love good. Okay. That's what it's talking about. It says a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Right? By their fruits. I'm going to get to the point where by the fruits you should know them. But... Um, if their life doesn't line up with this book, and their words don't line up with this book, uh, you need to err on the side of caution and just preach the gospel to them again. Brother says Christ, if their life doesn't line up with this book, if their words, their teachings, their... Um, like someone can be off in a teaching somewhere, but that doesn't justify being off. That's our biggest thing. I don't want to go too much to that. That you hear a lot, Brother says Christ, is that we can agree to disagree. Someone's going to be off somewhere, and they make it out like it's okay. They desensitize you to it, and it's okay. It's not a big. It's still a big deal. We all need to be on the same page. Paul said we need to be of the same mind and the same judgment, striving together. We're not supposed to be uh, divided when it comes to the Word of God. We're supposed to be at the same page. Okay, that's there. But um, go back to the gospel. Okay. Go back to now. Someone might be off a little bit in their teaching, but I'm talking about with all a lot of what they say when they go to preach and teach, they're grabbing different dispensations. They're always changing the word of God, adding to and subtracting. Remember what I taught you about um, one of their deceptions is, is they take a word in the Bible and they replace it with another word, and then they define that word that they just replace the word of God with, and they say, Look, my teaching's right. Well, if God would have used the word that they switched God's word to. I hope I'm not too confusing, but they take a word in the Bible and they switch it. And the example I gave is in Jeremiah where it talks about it's, it's, a, it's an idol like the Christmas tree. Okay? And it says workmen, not craftsmen. And it says workmen with the axe. Workmen is just someone who labors. 
physically labors. Someone who spends time laboring, doing something physical. Okay? That's what a workman is. A craftsman is someone who's skilled in a specific craft. It gets more specific. But they decide to replace it. But it also said, it said labor with the axe. What's, what are they laboring in? Cutting trees down. That's what the laboring is. That's it. But they tried to change it. Someone tried to change the word of God to their own word and then gave the definition of craftsman. Okay? I used that as an example. Um, gilded versus uh, decked. I was talking to a brother in Christ. I said, you can take a statue, whether it's stone, whether it's cement, whether it's wood, okay, um, clay, a statue, and you can put necklaces, gold necklaces, and silver necklaces, and bracelets. Um, you can, I've seen people, false religion, especially um, in the Middle East and everything, uh, Buddha, and everything. They, they doll these statues, they deck these statues with gold and silver, and it's not gilded. But someone didn't like the word decked. They decided to switch it to gilded, and then they gave their definition of what gilded was. Well, Godhead, also known as the Trinity, they replaced the word Godhead with Trinity, and then gave their definition of what the Trinity is. Right? Be very careful of that, brother says Christ. By their fruits you shall know them. Okay? As a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now I understand this is Old Testament, talking about the day of the Lord. But instruction and righteousness, there should be evidence. Where's the good fruit? The good fruit according to the scriptures. See, how they deceive people is they take you away from the Word of God and say, this is what good fruit is. Does, does their good fruit line up with the Scriptures? Right. It's hewn down and cast in the fire, whereby their fruits you shall know them. Preach the Gospel to them. You're done with them. You're going to have to in these last days, brothers and sisters of Christ. This is, I'm not saying this because I enjoy saying this. I don't like drama. I don't like division in the body of Christ. But in these last days, but, I use the word but to negate everything, in these last days, God comes first, His word comes first, your walk with Him comes first. And in these last days, brethren, uh, it's the falling away. You're going to see brethren fall away. They're going to start slowly falling to the right, falling to the left. And you've got to make a decision. Am I going to stay on that straight and narrow path? Or am I going to fall to the right or the left with them? Does God come first and His Word come first? Or does my flesh, the world, respecter of persons, the world, that man that I follow, I'm of him, i got to go wherever he goes. Okay. Satan creeps in, you start doing things Satan's way. Do those things come first? Those enemies. Or does God, through the Holy Spirit, by His Word, come first? Okay. John 14, 23. Turn to John 14, 30, John 14, 30, 23. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Uh, verse 21, go back to verse 20, it says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And I always say, what's the number one commandment for today? Obey the gospel. Someone tried to tell me, oh no, you go back to the Old Testament where Jesus is preaching. When they ask him which one of the ten commandments is the, is the, is the number one commandment, he said this, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, body, and soul. Mind, I think, mind, body, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's the number one commandment. For then, what's our number one commandment today? Obey the gospel. Right? You have people today that were the Jews that they love, they they following that. They love their neighbors themselves, and they love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, mind, body, and soul. But they reject Jesus Christ. And by rejecting Jesus Christ, they're going to hell. Is that the number one commandment today? No, the number one commandment today is obey the gospel. You need to get saved. And yes, we just read, if you love Jesus Christ, who is God, you're going to take his word, hide it in your heart, and you're going to live it. That's there. 
but you need to get saved. That's the number one command today. Obey the gospel. But we see there that God's word, if you love Jesus Christ, but here, when this, this, what we're going to be talking about here, this man here is trying to do away with Jesus Christ, the name Jesus Christ. You don't have to love Jesus Christ. You're to love Yahweh, Yeshua, Yahashua. I remember in this study that I did about uh, Jesus' name of all names, I talked about in the Old Testament, he was God was saving, and his name was the mighty God, and then he revealed himself as Jehovah. But by my name Jehovah was I not known. These are names for God the Father in the Old Testament, and God was dealing with mankind in the Old Testament and saving them, absolutely. But are we saved by that name, the mighty God? No. Today? No. Are we saved by Jehovah today? That name, Jehovah? No. And I'm going to get, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but we're going to talk about what's the name? But I had someone attack me saying, no, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with saying Yeshua, and we should go back to the Hebrew New Testament. We'll get into that in just a second. Okay. John 14, 15 says, go back to fifth, the verse 15. Okay. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And you still have people who attack that. The easy believism. Oh, it's not the Bible version issue. It's not that big of a deal. And, and you know, it's just believe in your head and that's it. And you continue living however you want to live. Your life doesn't line up with this. Your life lines up with this. The flesh. Your life lines up with the world. Your life lines up with Satan. And what he wants. So your love is for the flesh, the world, and Satan. But that's not a big deal, you know. As long as you believe. Head belief. As long as you believe. Only believe. Only believe. We preach so much, Brother Sis Christ, to you that don't become part of the falling away. And we preach more than anything I find myself preaching to people that have heard of a Jesus Christ, a false Jesus Christ, a false gospel. They've received a false spirit, an antichrist spirit. And I'm trying to bring them to the true Jesus Christ and what true love is for Jesus Christ. Here it is. Take it or leave it. And if they choose to leave it, let them alone. Let them alone. Okay. Colossians 3.17. Colossians 3.17. And then we'll get into this. Colossians 3.17. Did I get that right? Yes, but I'm not in Colossians. Sorry about that. I was in Corinthians, not Colossians. Colossians is a small book. Okay, Colossians 3, 17. Let's go back to 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, humbleness of mind. Today you got a lot of people that are pride, proudful and proud. I know it all. I have all the answers. But there's a guy, I don't have all the answers. This book does. God does. And he'll reveal it to us through his Holy Spirit and his time. But I don't have all the answers. But you got some people that are just so puffed up and so prideful... They'll go against this book because they're the final authority and they have all the answers. They can't be wrong. They're above accountability. They're above correction. So we're going to deal with this man here that I had to deal with online. Meekness. Long-suffering. Long-suffering. I'm not giving up. There's times where I'm like, I'm done. I'm not fighting anymore. I'm sick and tired of fighting. We need to take a breath. We need to step back and realize, like I said, when you start to fight for too long to somebody who doesn't want the truth, Yes, you need to stop. You need to say, okay, let them alone. But when someone comes to you, you don't turn around and automatically treat them like everyone else that's attacked you. If someone comes to you that's new and asks you a question, be ready to give an answer. Okay? Be long-suffering. Continue to fight for, the, for the, the Word of God. Continue to fight for the truth. Continue to live, live it with your life. Long-suffering. For bearing one another... That's a hard one. For bearing one another, brothers and sisters Christ, 
Like I said, in these last days, you've got the falling away. In these last days, you've got a lot of flesh going on. This world is so fleshly. It's so vexing. It's so tempting. What's going on in the world? Very tempting. And you've got brethren that are failing. We need to be long-suffering. Uh, we need to uh, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. I remember I did something wrong by a brother in Christ, and I went to apologize to him and said, I'm sorry. His response was, I forgive you. However, I'm going to keep my eye on you. Then you didn't forgive me. Then you didn't forgive me. Right? That was a lie. Right? Forgiving one another. If any may have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Right? Verse 14, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Remember, charity is self-sacrifice. Charity is what you do. Charity and liberty are not the same. They're the same thing. Liberty is what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross, liberating us from the law of sin and death. Charity is what you do, brother, says Christ. Self-sacrifice. Notice it says it doesn't say put on liberty. It says put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also ye are called into one body, and be ye thankful. Like I said, I quote scripture to these guys, and they just explode. I listed some of the people that I was quoting scripture to, and they explode. If the Holy Spirit's in them, and they have a love for God's word like they claim to, where's the peace of God? Why are they getting so riled up for me just quoting scripture? Why are they getting so bent out of shape? Why are they showing so much hate and disdain for the Word of God? It's not me that they're hating, because I haven't spoken, when we get into this, I spoke a few sentences that were my words, but it was 90 to 99% the Word of God in my comments to this guy, and he's flipping out on me. He's showing hate and disdain for the Word of God. Okay, where's the peace of God that rules in their hearts? Why are they so offended by absolute truth? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace, grace in your hearts to the Lord. There was a man that I was once uh, learning from, and like a mentor, and he always talked about how he has grace for the brethren. He used to, but what happened? But this is Christ. Am I? I, need, I always check myself. Am I losing grace for the brethren? I know of my struggles. The brethren are struggling. In these last days, we're all struggling. In these last days, we all have our distractions that we're fighting. Okay, do we have grace? We all have make mistakes in the scriptures. I just got corrected by a brother in Christ. I'm trying to piece things together on scripture recently. And I'm trying to do a Bible study on it to make sure that I'm getting it right and I don't make the same mistake again. Okay. I'm grateful for that brother in Christ that had grace for me. He could have come back and been a jerk about it. He could have been snotty. He could have been mean. He could have been arrogant, prideful. But he wasn't. He had grace. Grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Given thanks to God and the Father by him. Your words need to line up with this. Your deeds need to line up with this. God's perfect written word in English, the King James Bible. And the name is Jesus Christ. And we're really going to get into that. So let's get into this. All right. He made his first remark. Was the name Jesus is not even 500 years old. See, this is their, their, their thing. The name Jesus isn't even 500 years old. Our Redeemer didn't come in that name. Oh boy. Now, if he's just somebody that's like Orthodox Jew, you know, that don't believe in Jesus Christ, period. They're trying to do away with Jesus Christ. I'm not saying I, I I'm not saying it's okay, but I can see where they're coming from. But most of the time when you're dealing with somebody who pushes Yahweh on the comment sections and online that pushes Yahweh and Yeshua and Yahweh, all these different names for Jesus, replacing Jesus. You're dealing with Gentiles posing as Jews. They're not actual Jews that are doing this. There might be some, but a lot of them are posing as Jews. Okay? What does the Bible say? Right? Them that say they are Jews and are not, 
have been found liars? Yeah. Our Redeemer didn't come in that name, but you can be sure of one thing. The Antichrist will. And he quotes John 5, 43. Okay. John 5, 43. I think this is one about there are many Antichrists. It says here, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Okay, okay, it's not the one, but the one where Jesus talks about in these last days there will be many antichrists. There's many people coming in my name, claiming to be me, that aren't me. Okay. Now this is addressed to the Jews. Absolutely. Okay, and in the time of Jacob's trouble, and you go into the day of the Lord, okay, I do believe that God's going to bring back the Hebrew language. Don't get me wrong. But he says that the Antichrist will. The Antichrist is going to, what's, I mean, think about it, brother, says Christ, Satan in the Bible, what does he love to do? He loves to counterfeit God. He loves to counterfeit God. God is an angel of the Lord. Satan is an angel of light, transforms himself into an angel of light. Jesus is the line of the tribe of Judah. Satan goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's doing everything he can to copy Jesus Christ. So if he's going to come in the name Jesus Christ, that's the name. He's copying him, our Savior. He's not going to come in another name. He's going to come in the name of the actual Savior, Son of God, Jesus Christ. That's the name he's going to come in. Absolutely, I agree with that. But what he's not pointing out is that Satan likes to con uh, uh, counterfeit God. He wants to be God. Right? Deceiving almost the whole world, yeah, the, deceiving them into believing he is the Son of God. And how, what's the best way to deceive someone into believing you're the Son of God? You try to make yourself as, li as like the Son of God as possible, including taking his actual name, Jesus Christ. To take his mark, Exodus 24, two cross sticks, a simple cross. Okay. The last letter in the Hebrew alphabet is the Ta, and then he starts going into Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew. Okay. All right. I don't speak Hebrew, and I doubt this person actually does too. I was talking with some brethren, and it's like the old original, when the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, the dialect and how things were written, it's not the same as the Hebrew that's getting used today in Israel. I believe it's two different Hebrews, dialects. Okay, So you can't compare and say, oh, they're both the same, and use the Hebrew of today for the book. And that's what I see going on a lot today. Um, but that's a whole other thing. But he starts going into Hebrew. And I'm like, I don't speak Hebrew. Uh, Bibles, Jesus says, the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. We're in the time of the Gentiles. So that's why the New Testament is in Greek. That was the world language of the Gentiles. It's the time of the Gentiles. Okay. And right now the one world language is English. And I was talking to a brother about this. Um, I've been all over the world, brother says Christ. I've been all over the world. Um, let's see, China, Thailand, Australia, Japan, the Philippines. Um, a lot of the islands around there. I've been all over Europe. Uh, I've, been to, I've been to the Middle East, uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, I've been all over Europe, uh, Germany, uh, London, England, uh, France, uh, Belgium. Uh, not Belgium. I have a brother and sister in Christ in Belgium. Uh, I can't remember. I don't know. I, I went to visit all the different countries that border in, um, Germany, and I have to look again, but Austria, I think, is one. Um, so I got to see a lot of, uh, a, a bit of Europe. Right. I've been to Canada. Okay. The only thing I've never been to is I've never been to South America. I've never been to South Africa. Okay. Those are the two continents I've never been to. But I've been all over the world. And let me tell you, brothers and Christ, you go out in the boonies, it's just the language of that land. But when you're in the major cities that are considered tourist attractions, I mean people coming from all nations, there's two languages. You'll see English, and you'll see the native tongue. 
I was watching a guy walk through uh, Israel, um, through, um, anyway, Israel. They walked, he walks through all the different cities in Israel. Jerusalem. My brain froze. Jerusalem. I see him walk, I like watching videos where he's walking through the uh, Jewish quarter, the old city within Jerusalem. He goes out to all the different walls, the outer walls, and walks around the walls of Jerusalem. And as he's walking around and you're passing the shops, you look and you see English and their ver version of Hebrew today. Like I said, I don't believe it. I could be wrong, but I don't believe it truly lines up because I'm not a scholar. But it doesn't line up with the Hebrew of the Old Testament. Kind of like our English today. Does our English today, lie, the rules on how to write, you know, the nouns, pronouns, does, are these rules that we have today the same rules they had when they translated the Greek to English over 400 years ago. No. So the English said, you can't go off the English of today and the rules and everything on how we do English today and try to go out and say, make this book line up with the rules of the English today. Because that's what they're trying to do and that's why they're perverting the Word of God with all these Bible perversions. Okay? But English is everywhere. English is the main language. It's the one world language. It's already here. I've been there. I've, not, I can testify to it. You can watch some videos of people walking through all these major tourist attractions all over the world, and they have cameras now. Everyone's got cameras now. And they're just walking through. They do a video where it's just a walk, where they're walking through the town. They're walking through the streets. And you look at the names of the buildings, you'll see some English on the building. The main name might not be in English, but they'll have a little sign saying English, like enter, exit. That's English. Why do they have English? Because it's the one world language. Okay. So bottom line, his comment is, is that Jesus, the name Jesus is not 500 years old. Actually, the name Jesus goes all the way back to the very beginning. Remember John? Because I'm a Bible believer, so I go off my, this book. And as we get in here a little bit later, this guy's going to claim to be a Bible believer. Oh yeah, yeah, I believe that the, God's word in English, that's God's word. John 1.1 1, 1 says that in the beginning was the capital W Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I believe that God, the Father, the soul of the Godhead, had a body in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord, that man, okay? and his body didn't have a name. God the Father had all these titles, the mighty God, Jehovah, but his body was only known as the angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord. Okay? They didn't know the name of the body of God in the Old Testament. That wasn't revealed. Every time they got asked, what is thy name? Why, the, why dost thou ask my name, seeing it is secret? It wasn't supposed to be revealed to us till the New Testament. Just before the New Testament, because the, the Gospels are actually in the Old Testament. It's not until he dies that the New Testament comes in, when Jesus dies on the cross. But he's saying the name's not even 500 years old. And if you really want to know God's word and know your Redeemer's name, what do we got to do? We got to go back to the Hebrew. How is that any different than the people who claim we need the original Greek? We got to go back to the original Greek. If you truly want to know God's word, we got to go back to the Greek. I got God's perfect written word in English. I can understand English. This book is perfect without error, godly inspired. Why would I go back to a dead language that I don't understand? That's what Satan's always trying to do, brother Jesus Christ. He's trying to push you into a language you don't understand, so then somebody who's all puffed up can be the final authority. And maybe, just maybe, they can get you puffed up. They get to say what the God's Word is. I, I don't have a foundation that says, I have to follow this. There is no foundation. We make it up as we go. You can be the foundation, and they can get you puffed up. And you can start correcting God's Word and saying what God's Word is. Oh, yeah. But here's the thing, I'm not going to get, I'm just, my warning to the brethren, don't get into arguing about the Hebrew and the Greek and everything. Don't get into that. Stick with the Word of God, and you'll find out that if they don't want a perfect written word, they're going to have to go their own way. And their way is going to lead them to hell. Okay? Receive, and I put this in the verses, receive the engrafted word that's able to save your soul. You reject it, then you have to go your own way. This person rejects it. He rejects God's word. 
Here's my remark. I just quoted scripture. James 1.21. Okay. At this point, pause the video and you can turn to these. James 1.21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Okay, but this isn't my words, this is God's words. Okay? And we wouldn't even know what that means if we had the Greek in front of us. I would have no clue what that means. God gave us his word, perfect written word in English. Okay? And to go on a little bit of a side note, brothers of Christ, I've been talking to some brethren that are overseas and everything, and they're like, well, I wish I had, had God's word in my own language. And I asked them, can you read and speak English? Well, yeah, yeah, we can read and speak English. Then stick with the book. You don't need it translated in your own language. Do you speak English? Stick with the book. In the Old Testament, it was just Greek. I mean, okay, so I'm talking about back when Paul was writing, it was just Greek. You don't think there was tons of different languages all throughout that area? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Tons of different ways to write those uh, different languages down? Absolutely. Did Paul say, oh, we got to have God's word in every language of today? No, he gave it in Greek. Why? Because that was the world translation. The Ma majority of the people knew their native language and Greek. Like I just explained today with English. We have English and their native language. Back then it was Greek and their native language. Okay. If you can speak and you can read and you can understand English, stick with the King James Bible. You don't need it translated in your own tongue. Okay. But it's through God's perfect written word that we're able to get saved. That we get to know about the real Jesus Christ and God warns us about the real Jesus Christ versus a false antichrist when Satan comes and claims to be Jesus Christ versus the real Jesus Christ. See, the thing that gets me, I'll go back to that real quick. He says the Antichrist will. Well, if you go back to the Hebrew that doesn't exist, he's not going to claim to be Jesus Christ. He's going to claim to be Yahweh, Yeshua, Yahashua. Going off of his thing. But you see how they're double-minded and messed up? See, it doesn't apply over there. Only the English applies when it comes to the Antichrist claiming to be Jesus but when the Bible here claims that God's Son, the Son of God, His name is Jesus Christ, that's wrong. We need to go back to the Hebrew. But then he goes to the English with the Antichrist and says he's going to claim to be Jesus. Oh boy. You see how that works, brother, sister, Christ? They take what they want and they throw out the rest. Is that how we're supposed to be? Absolutely not. 1 Timothy 2.5, 1 Timothy 2.5, remember I'm just quoting scripture here, I'm talking to you about it, but in the comment section when I respond to him, I'm just quoting these scriptures, I quote James 1.21, that's it, not my words, God's words, the graft of words that's able to save your soul, this is what we have today, this is what's perfect, this is how you get saved, take it or leave it, and a lot of people choose to leave it, okay, 1 Timothy 2.5 says, there, For there is one capital G God. Sorry, Trinitarians. There's only one capital G God. I watched Ex-Catholics for Christ. I'll mention, I'm going to mention it more in another video, but I watched Ex-Catholics for Christ. They're trying to tell the Muslims, We believe in one God. Yet they're promoting multiple gods. And they're just fumbling and falling all over themselves. Oh yeah, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Father. That's three gods. Oh, but we believe in one God. And they're confusing. You have two groups. I'll, I'll say it again in another video. You've got two groups that believe in multiple gods and yet claim to believe in one God. And they're both trying to convince the other that the other one doesn't believe in one God. <laughs> it's like, woo, woo. It's Nuttyville. It's craziness. For there is one capital G God. And one mediator, one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Now we see it again, Christ Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. It's Jesus Christ. It's not Yahweh. It's not Yeh Yehoshua or Yeshua. It's not the mighty God, even though that is a title for God. This other one's no, but that is a title for God, the mighty God, Jehovah. 
Okay? And Jesus has titles, you know, the Everlasting Father, you know, Emmanuel. These are titles. Jesus has titles, but there's only one name. There's only one mediator between man and God. Okay? Between men and God, the man Christ Jesus. Acts 4.12. Acts 4.12. We read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There's only one name. Which is it? Is it Yahweh? Is it Yeshua? Is it Yahashua? Well, those are all names of Jesus. No, there's only one name. I got saved off Jesus Christ. What this person is saying as we get through this is that if you got saved off the name Jesus Christ, you are lost and on your way to hell. Because we just read there. There's only one name where we must be saved by it. And he's saying we need to go back to the Hebrew and find the Hebrew name for Jesus because that's the only way you're going to know your Redeemer. But what he's really saying is it's the only way you're going to get saved. Look for a name that doesn't exist. Doesn't that sound more like how Satan wants? He doesn't want people to get saved. Satan wants brethren to, that are saved to doubt your salvation. Your flesh gets you to doubt your salvation if you're not living right, according to this book. Your, uh, the world tries to get you to doubt your salvation, and Satan tries to get you to doubt your salvation. But he's also trying to do his way to hide how to find true salvation. Now, he's going to fail every time, brothers and Christ. I'm, a, I'm a living proof, testimony, that if you're truly seeking the truth, when it comes to people in the world, lost people in the world, if you're truly seeking for truth, God will show it to you. Satan can't prevent you from finding the truth. But he sure can try everything he can do to distract you from wanting to go after the truth by giving you lies. Well, getting you to buy lies. John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You reject Jesus Christ, the Son, you reject God, the Father. Yeah, you reject Jesus Christ, the Son, you reject God, the Father. I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. You have to go through Jesus Christ in order to get saved. There's no getting around it. Although people are still trying to get around it. First we have to go to the Greek. Then we have to go to this phantom, like the New Testament was never written in Greek, or in Greek it was, was never written in Hebrew. There is no original Hebrew manuscripts for the New Testament. It was written in Greek. We don't have the Hebrew for the New Testament. Right? So you're supposed to believe in something that doesn't exist again. We don't have the originals. There's people who worship the original Greek. We don't have the originals today. Right? What they want. They want you to believe in something that you don't have so they can mess your mind up because they don't want you believing in something you do have. Right in your hands. They don't want you believing in something you do have. They want you to believe in something you don't have. Right? John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. And what's that son? Jesus Christ. 1 John 5, 9. 1 John 5, 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Greater. God says the time of the Gentiles, it's a witness. This book is God's perfect written word. The fruits of this book prove that it's God's perfect written word. Okay. The witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son, Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. 
These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now here's where I wrote down. This is only, there is only one name today by which ye are saved, and that name is Jesus Christ. I know this isn't, I know it's a one-way video, but part of us is like, can I get an amen? Today they're trying to get away from Jesus Christ. They're promoting a false Jesus Christ today. There, there's all these movements trying to get you away from the name Jesus Christ. Okay. The believer in the name, uh, and, the, and that name is Jesus Christ. Make your choice. Jesus or Yeshua, Yahashua, Yahweh. You cannot have both. One will lead you to heaven, the other to hell. What did we just read there? There's only one name, brother, says Christ. We only have it in, in English. We have the Greek, which I don't, the dead language of Greek, translated into English. So today, we have it in English. The original Greek's gone. Okay, we have faithful copies, yes. But today we have it in English. I have the name. The Bible says there's only one name. What is that one name? They're saying it's not Jesus Christ. And yet when you ask them, they have multiple ways to say Jesus Christ. There's multiple names. But the Bible says there's only one name. Okay. So that was my response. I did say a little bit there at the end, but I just quoted a lot of scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians 8.6 1 Corinthians 8.6, remember I quote this a lot. For there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. There's one capital G God, the Father. The soul is God. Remember what I said? This upsets some of the people. God, the Father, doesn't have three parts. It's not God and three parts. It's not what the Godhead is. God, the Father, is just the soul. That's it. One God. One Lord, Jesus Christ. There's only one body. God has only one body. And that body is Jesus Christ. What's the Godhead then? Uh, we'll be getting into it in another study, but what's the Godhead? It's God and the person of Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ has a body. He has God the Father in him as the soul, and he has the Holy Spirit in him as a spirit. There's your three parts. These three are one. In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? But there's only one body to, G to God, and it's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's just Jesus Christ. Uh, Joshua 24, 15, I quote him. And if it, this is coming from Joshua, because they like to say, Joshua saves, Joshua saves. Okay, there was a brother in Christ, and I'd have to look into it a little more, but brother in Christ was showing me uh, two verses on how they get Joshua, Yahashua, for Jesus, because they, they doubt the New Testament, because the New Testament says Jesus was with them and brought him into the um, promised land. Okay? And they're saying, oh, no, no, that's a mistake because it was Joshua. It was Joshua that brought him in. And I've already t I talked about that in that study I did on Jesus' name above all names, where I talked about how and the, the, the uh, Jews kept trying to worship a man. They wanted a man as king. They want God as their king. They didn't want to give God the glory. They wanted a man down here to give the glory to. Okay? It wasn't God saved us and brought us out of Egypt. It was Moses saved us and brought us out of Egypt. It wasn't God brought us into the promised land. It was Joshua brought us into the promised land. It wasn't God that saved us from the Philistines. It was King David that saved us from the Philistines. You see how that works? They didn't want to give God the glory. They wanted a man that was flesh and bones before him to give him the glory. So when God came in flesh and bones, in the likeness of sinful flesh, did they still give him glory? No. It was a cop-out. It was a complete and total cop-out. What they wanted is they wanted to have the glory. That's what the truth was. They wanted to be the final authority. They wanted to glorify themselves and each other. They wanted to glorify man itself. Even when God accommodated them and came down in the likeness of sinful flesh, flesh and bones, they still rejected him as king. Right? But that's the problem they have. So I grab from Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom ye will serve. Where the gods which your father served were on the other side of the flood, 
They're making up names for Jesus. What they're doing is creating false gods. Lowercase g gods. Or the gods of the Amorites. There's some people who elevated Moses up to God status. Joshua up to God status. King David up to God status. Elijah up to God status. They would elevate him. I mean, look at Paul. Was it Paul? It's either Peter and John, or it was Paul and Barnabas. But they can't, because I don't have this written down, but they went in, they did some miracles. They performed some miracles before these lost people, and they decided, we're going to make these guys gods. One's going to be Jupiter, one's going to be Mercury or Mercurial. Okay? They want to elevate man as God. They don't want God to be God. They want to elevate man as God. And we did that study on human, the word human, wise, wise man, that we can become gods. You can be as gods. It's all about elevating man. Okay? The, of the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The whole point is, is you have a perfect written word. It tells us the name is Jesus Christ. I'm going to believe in Jesus Christ. Not in a fake name that, that, that you have no foundation for. It. Zero. Like I said, he can go through all the Hebrew he wants. He doesn't know Hebrew, the original Hebrew. His response. When I, like I said, I just quoted scripture and then I just said, hey, there's only one name by which you are saved today. And it's Jesus Christ. If you didn't go through, I didn't say this, but I'm, I'm thinking, if he didn't go through Jesus Christ, he didn't get saved. His response. Brother. I'm not debating the AV, authorized version. I believe we have Father's words in English. But notice he, he, he kept from saying perfect word in English. Just we have God's word in English. The very message he wanted us to have. Really? Then why didn't you call his name Jesus? You see how the deception here is? Oh yeah, I believe that. I'm, I'm with you. I'm one of you. I also, I also firmly believe us as believers should seek out our Redeemer's true name. It connects the dots, if you will, with His holy words in a way I don't believe many understand. And he put a little smiley, smiley face. A little smiley face. Like I said, you can't understand this. I, I speak English. It's right here in front of me. I can understand this, but he's saying you can't truly understand this unless you go back to its original language, which would be Greek. No, 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 no. The original language is Hebrew. Okay. But you see, I have the double talk here. Oh, yeah, I believe this is God's word. And the very message he wanted us to have, remember, with the people who doubt God's word, they'll say it's just the message that matters. It's just the message that matters. Notice he used the word message. Not the word of God that he wanted us to have. It's just the message that matters. It's, it gives us basic message. But if you truly want to know God's word, get rid of this pesky King James Bible and get the original Hebrew New Testament. But there is no he original Hebrew New Testament. There isn't. Okay. Be careful of that, brother says Christ. They're always going to come back, I'm one of you. However, they go against what they just said. He just did a double, I don't know if it's called a double negative, but what he did is he did, said something that, said, that agrees with us, and then he just went right against what he just said that agrees with us. Oh yeah, this is God's word. However, you need to go away from God's word if you want to, uh, you have to get rid of God's word if you really want to know God's word. Yeah. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to try to make me out to be crazy. But, uh, no. I have God's word. You just said you believe this is what God wanted us to have. Time of, we're in the time of the Gentiles. Okay. What they call the church age. The death of Jesus Christ. The catching away of the body of Christ. That's what we're in, brothers and Christ. This is what God wanted us to have. He wanted it in Greek. There at the beginning, now he wants it in English because that's the world language. Greek is dead, and God promised that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away three times in the four Gospels. In other words, Greek became outdated. It became a dead language. People weren't speaking Greek anymore. The world started going to English, so it got translated, God translated it from Greek to English, the, wor the world language of today. God's word's always been available. 
and the world language of the day. In the Old Testament, his Jew, when it came to his people, it was limited to the Jewish people. That's why it was in Hebrew. Today, salvation has gone out to the world, to the Gentiles. So the Gentiles are numerous. Different countries, different... So what God's going to do is he's always going to grab the world language of the day, and that's what he's going to use to give his word to his people. Because now we are adopted in when you get saved. We are his people. Okay? I know some people like to fight that. Okay? Here's my response, because like I said, I saw right through them. Oh, I believe that this is what God's word, it gives us the message. Be careful of that deception. He doesn't believe this is God's word. He just believes you can get the basic message from this book. He doesn't believe it. He knows he didn't say this is God's perfect written word in English. He didn't say that. He avoided saying that. Here's my response. First, you do not believe we have the Father's word in English. He doesn't. He's a liar. You're lying to yourself and anyone reading. If you were true, you would stand for Jesus Christ instead of finding a way to replace him. Like I said, there is no Hebrew New Testament, original Hebrew New Testament. There's no way to get Jesus' name in Hebrew. Because Jesus comes from the translation of the Greek, and you'd have to know how to translate Greek to Hebrew. And they don't. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, yeah, I can do it. Be careful. It's a dead language. Be careful. They're finding ways to replace him. Second, those who are saved and born again have the Redeemer's true name. You just reject it. And here I go quoting scripture again. I know it's, I don't just notice he's just using his feelings and opinions. He, he quoted a couple verses that made him look and sound a little right, but he's not comparing scripture with scripture. He's talking about, he quotes one time where Jesus is saying, yeah, there's these false gods that you guys will accept, but you won't accept the true God. But he didn't quote where Jesus said, there's many people that will come in my name. There will be many antichrists. He even said, they'll come in my name. Saying, I am Christ. So he left that one out. Purposely. Because I will show that his house of cards, everything just falls down. When you compare scripture with scripture. Okay. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, I go back to the scriptures. I'm not the final authority. He's not the final authority. Where's our final authority? I'm starting to realize as I'm getting through this, that this man and I, we don't have the same authority. We don't have the same final authority. Now, I have a problem, brothers and Christ. I know it's hard for some of, uh, of you to believe, and I'm being sarcastic because people are trying to act like I put myself on a pedestal, like I'm so... I have a problem, brothers and Christ. You know what one of my fleshly problems is? I need to know when to quit. I mean, like I said, with Tim and them, I just kept quoting scriptures and scriptures, and they just kept getting more upset and more upset. I quoted a scripture, abstain from all appearance of evil. The, with the Wicked video game. I, that's all I did. And they come back yelling at me, calling me names and everything, and then I come back and I just go, put in another verse, put no wicked thing before thine eyes. And they just upset it even more, and they just went crazy, calling me a liberty thief, liberalist and everything, because I was calling out their sin. And I could have stopped there and said, okay, they don't want the truth. They hate God's word, they don't want the truth. They would prefer the sins of the flesh and the world over God's word. They're false converts. It was uh, Tim and Jeremy Carter at Rod of Iron that got on. Their, I found I found his original Facebook page that he was still using. He's got his uh, ministry Facebook page, and then he's got his regular Facebook page. This was years ago, like five, ten, five years ago or something like that. And um, I was like, uh, okay. And I put in another verse saying, "If a man love me, he will keep my words." I just gave the two verses that says, "What you're doing is wrong. It's evil. It's wickedness. Stay away from it." And then I put in there, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our abode with him. Oh, they just start going crazy. I, I, the flesh, I just, I keep trying to poke, the, poke them by just throwing one more scripture in, one more scripture in. One, and I need to get to the point where I need to stop doing that. They don't want it. They don't want the truth. I need to stop. But my flesh, one of the problems I have, I'll keep throwing verses and throwing verses, and it's like poking them because it's upsetting them. 
The Word of God is upsetting them. They're being convicted by the Word of God, and they're showing their hate and disdain for the Word of God. All right? Same thing with, uh, you know, Brother Brian, that, uh, it's Born Again Barbarian. I wish he'd go back to being King James Video Ministries. He's not King James Video Ministries anymore. You guys can attack me on that statement all you want. He's just not Brother Jesus Christ. This is not his final authority anymore. And there's a lot of brethren that are coming to the light saying, okay, I can't follow. If he's not going to follow this, I have to follow this and let him go in his own direction. But I throw scripture to him and say, I think this is upset. I have to get to the point where i got to stop and say, okay, he doesn't want the truth. When you come across somebody who doesn't want the truth, you need to stop. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but one of the verses is, is casting pearls before swine. That we're going to end this with. Okay? You've got to get a point where you've got to stop or it's going to, they're going to end up rending you. For instance, Brother Brian. Has he rended me? Absolutely. Bear false witness, railing for railing, mocking. We could have went our separate ways and I could have just been like, let him go, let him go. But I kept making video after video, proving truth, throwing scripture, scripture. I already made, I made a few videos that proved Christmas is false. I didn't need to make 50 of them. I made enough. I'm good. I kind of, I kind of went too far. Okay, as far as poking somebody, because I was trying to get him to see the truth, and he didn't want to see the truth. And what happened? It backfired on me. The man didn't just say, hey, I believe he's wrong, and goes about his business. He said, I believe he's wrong, and now he's saying, I'm a heretic, I'm a false, uh, I'm a false convert, I'm lost. He's got his name-calling, mocking, uh, bearing false witness, okay, uh, whispering and backbiting, talking about me behind my back, won't come to me and talk to me in my face. He's, he'd rather talk about me behind my back. And it's not just him. Uh, Tim and them, Jeremy Cart, same thing. They went and talked about me behind my back. I keep trying to throw scripture after scripture, and I just keep poking them, thinking it's funny that they just go crazy when it's actually sad. See, that's my flesh that gets involved, brothers in Christ, and it's wrong. Not wrong to quote scripture, but I'm saying it's wrong to throw scripture at somebody who doesn't want it. Just to see them get so bent out of shape and go crazy and go nuts. That's my flesh getting the drama, you know what I'm saying? The drama. Just I love throwing the scripture out there and watch the drama. Woohoo! That's not how we're supposed to be, Brother Sister Christ. We have to get to a point where we say, okay, enough's enough. They don't want the truth. Let them alone. Let's go to somebody who does want the truth. And that's the thing that I, I'm working on. Please forgive me, Brother Sister Christ. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 2.10 reads... Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, for the elect's sake, talking about the Jewish people, that they may also obtain salvation. This is the Jewish people, that they also may obtain salvation, which is in, well, he's, re he's referring to the Jewish people. He's going to say Yeshua. He's going to say Yahashua. Yahweh. No, he says G Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Today, if a Jew wants to get saved, he doesn't go through Yeshua. Or Yahashua. If a Jew wants to get saved, he's got to go through Jesus Christ. Oh boy. 2 Timothy 3.15 And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I always say our Lord, sorry. Christ Jesus. He is my Lord. Hopefully he's your capital, our Lord. But I don't want to add to the scripture. It says, in Christ Jesus. Suffice to say, he didn't like that. Here's his response. You are sadly incorrect on everything you have said. Everything you have said. I've quoted mostly scripture. I did say a little, thing, a little line here and there, but mostly it's scripture I'm quoting. The scripture says the name is Jesus Christ. The scripture he claims to believe in. Oh yeah, yeah, it gives us the basic. He didn't say basic, but that's what when they say the message. That's why you got that perverted, the message Bible. All that matters is that we're getting the basic message, and yet it's the most perverted and messed up Bible out there. Perversion, Bible perversion. Okay? Because it's not the message, it's the word of God that matters. A perfect written word of God. That's what matters, not the message. You are sadly incorrect on everything you have said. Our Redeemer was a Jewish, was a Jewish, with a Jewish name. I think he meant to say our Redeemer was a Jew, with a Jewish name. 
And then he says, study. Hmm. You know, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What do you think I'm doing here? I'm showing I am studying. What does the Bible say? It's Jesus Christ. He doesn't have any foundation to say it's any other name. None. But he'd rather go off any other name. He, just, he, he doesn't want Jesus Christ. Anything but Jesus Christ. Okay. <clears throat> now, here, listen to what they're saying here. Look at the implications. Sorry this has gone on this long. <clears throat> My throat starts getting like this because we've been talking for a while. Forgive me. But one of the implications they'll make is they'll try to guilt trip you, brother says Christ. They'll try to guilt trip you. Okay? And they'll say that if you don't use Jesus' Hebrew name, which we don't have, Hebrew name that they get to make up, okay, then you don't believe Jesus is, is Jewish. That's what he's saying here. He's trying to guilt trip me. And he's going to try to guilt, and they'll try to guilt trip you. You don't believe that the that our Savior is Jewish. Uh, I believe Jesus is a Jew. Everyone who wrote this book is a Jew. Paul is a Jew. Even Luke, even though you have, bre even though you have men that are uh, losing it, and they're trying to say Luke is a Gentile. No, Luke was a Jew. He is a Jew. Okay. But today, in the time of the Gentiles, there's blood Jews, yes, but today there's neither Jew nor Greek. Bond nor free. When it comes to salvation, salvation has gone out to the world. When Jesus was physically walking on the earth, uh, the Gospels, salvation is of the Jews. But now it's gone out to the world. We're in the time of the Gentiles. Okay. But they're going to try to get you down, Brother Jesus Christ, and say, you are dissing your Savior who's a Jew. You're putting him down. You're, you're saying that you can't stand that he's a Jew. It's called guilt tripping. Okay? Now, I do not deny that my Savior is a Jew, and everyone that wrote the New Testament is a Jew. But, according to him, we can only understand God's word if we go back to Hebrew. That's what he's pushing. He's not pushing. He, since he can't win the argument that this is God's perfect written word, that it ain't, he can't win that argument. It's not for some phantom uh, New Testament in Hebrew that doesn't exist. Okay. What he's going to do is he's going to try to shift it over and make you to start arguing about whether Jesus is a Jew or not. That's not the argument. Don't be distracted. The argument is, is this God's perfect written word? And if it is, what is the one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved? What is the one name? There's only one. That's what, we're, what I'm discussing with him and trying to push him to let him know it's Jesus Christ. If he didn't come to the cross broken in repentance and give his life to Jesus Christ, he is lost and on his way to hell. Period. Amen. So he's shifting it over. Notice he's got nothing to say about the, words that I, the, the word of God. He's ignoring it. Well, it's just the basic message. He's ignoring it. And he's trying to guilt trip me, and he'll try to guilt trip you, brother, sister Christ, into believing that to shift the conversation over to now I'm saying that Jesus isn't Jew. When did I say Jesus wasn't a Jew? We're talking about God's perfect written word in English versus having to have it in Hebrew, let alone Greek, Hebrew. All right? <clears throat> That's what this is, discussion is supposed to be about, but notice how they shift it over. Even through the New Testament, even though I'm sorry, even though the New Testament was not written in Hebrew, and there is no Hebrew translation of the Greek text that underlines the KJV, I have in this is my notes. This isn't my, I'll give you my response. This is this is my this is my notes for you, brothers is Christ. Be careful. They're going to try to guilt trip you and take you off target. What's the target? Is this God's perfect written word or not? If it is, the Bible says there's one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. One meter between man and God, the man, Christ, Jesus. If this is God's perfect written word, then the name is Jesus Christ. If the name isn't Jesus Christ, this isn't God's perfect written word. And that's what he's pushing. 
And I need to stay on target. This is God's word. My Savior is Jesus Christ. Yes, he's a Jew, but the name is Jesus Christ. They're doing everything they can to get away from that name. Right? And they're trying to guilt trip you. But, how uh, is it? Uh, there's some brethren that have done studies on the Bible version issue. And what happened was is you have the New Testament, which is in Greek. Okay, all these Greek manuscripts, the letters that Paul wrote, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, okay, and so on. They found their ways, copies of those letters, faithful copies, found their way to Alexandria, Egypt. And there was a man called Origen, or it almost sounds like, like Origen, I think is his name. And um, basically he took those manuscripts, those letters, and said, hmm, I can improve on this. I can make it better. I want it done my way. In other words, Jesus isn't good enough. I want it done my way. I want a Hebrew name. I want a Hebrew translation. But with Origen, he wanted a Greek. He took the Greek. Because remember, the, the New Testament is written in Greek originally. He took the Greek and he decided, oh, a better rendering would be, let's cross that out. Let's take that out. Let's put this in. And he totally messed up and came out with his own text of Greek texts. Letters. Totally messed up everything. And then, though, then the story goes that uh, there's a guy later down the road, there was a guy named Pepe, P-I-P-I, -Pi, uh, uh, Pepe or P-P, -P, however you want to pronounce it, that he came along and said, you know what, I want to give the Gentile people, like the Egyptians, uh, God's word in the Jewish language. It's the fairy tale. 33rd Book does a good study on this. If you've uh, watched this channel, one of the channels I support is 33rd Book. Right? And one of his studies, he talks about this, and he says that so Pe Pepe takes that corrupt um, Greek text and translates it to Hebrew, so then he gives the people a Hebrew New Testament, but it's still not based off the original Greek. Now, it's a fairy tale. Some people believe it's a fairy tale. They just made up. They just made up a Hebrew New Testament, okay? But there was no, you know what I'm saying? There is no original Hebrew New Testament. There is no Hebrew translation today that's translated off of the original Greek manuscripts. They can try to claim there is, there is all they want, okay? There isn't. But we're supposed to believe, you know, in some fictitious, made-up thing that doesn't exist. All to get you away from something that does exist. Something that we do have, brothers and sisters of Christ. Be very careful, but right there is the guilt tripping. The guilt tripping, trying to shift the argument from, is this God's perfect written word? And if it is, the name's Jesus Christ. He's trying to shift that over to, oh, now you don't believe, to another argument, you don't believe Jesus is Jewish. He's trying to create a different argument because he's losing this one. This is God's word. He's not getting me to, to bow down and cow down to something that doesn't exist. I have God's perfect written word, and he's not going to take it from me. Don't let him take it from you, brothers and sisters Christ. So, my response, P.S., this was something else, because he said, um, Oh, his remark, I cut it out. His remark, when he went into the Hebrew and everything, he did all this thing about Hebrew, 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 and it was a long remark, and made him look intelligent, because he's going through a dead language that I don't understand, and most people don't. Um, today, the original Hebrew. I have the Texas Receptus up there. Um, but at the very end, he said, May Yahashua bless you. Okay, it was Yeshua, Yahashua. But in order to get it on my notes, I cut all that out because I'm not going to waste your time with the Hebrew or the Greek. Uh, you don't waste your time with that junk, the dead language. But I had to make one of my responses was, I said, P.S., I don't want Yeshua's blessing. I want God the Father's blessings through His Son, Jesus Christ. I keep bringing it back to Jesus Christ, but that's what we got to do. We've got to keep bringing it back to Jesus Christ. John 5.22. John 5.22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. 
God the Father is going to judge the world through His Son, Jesus Christ. Hmm. Philippians 2.5 says, Philippians 2, chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which, also, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Okay, that body that was created was the likeness of sinful flesh. But Jesus had an incorruptible body in the Old Testament. We've proven that time and time again. But God the Father gave up his incorruptible body, the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, for a corruptible one, the Son of God, New Testament, or going into the New Testament. Hey, and being found and fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name singular. I'm saying the word singular. It's not in the scripture. I'm saying the word name there is singular. Not names plural. Singular. Which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth. And things which are under the earth. Bow. Remember what Jesus says? They're going to profess that I, I've done all this for you, Lord, and, and I'm one of you, Lord, and I love you, Lord, and, and, and I, I love you, Yeshua. I love you, Yeshua, and I've done this for you, Yeshua, and I've done that for you. And he's going to look at them and say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you cursed and everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. We all have to go through Jesus Christ. I want Jesus Christ, God's blessing through Jesus Christ. We say, God bless. We don't say, Yeshua, may Yeshua bless you. We say, God bless. Okay? Now, I understand in the Old Testament, they're trying to say Yeshua is God in the Old Testament, but we say, God bless, because we got the English. Maybe he was just saying, God bless, versus Jesus bless. Okay? But I want God's blessing through Jesus Christ. I'm bringing it back to Jesus Christ. And once again, like I said, I speak English. That's why I have the Old Testament in English. God's perfect written word. That at the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This man someday, if he doesn't truly come to believing that this is God's perfect written word and truly get saved and born again, he's going to have to stand before the Son of God which is God Almighty manifest in the flesh, and he's going to have to say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Not Yeshua, not Yahashua. Okay? Not Yahweh is Lord. He's going to have to say, Jesus is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Matthew 7.23 when you have people that say, well, I deny that. This book is just, you know, a guideline. This book is just a guideline. I mean, it's got a good message, but it's not God's perfect written word. We shouldn't be saying Jesus Christ. We should be saying Yahashua or Yeshua or Yahweh in place of Jesus. In place of Jesus. Matthew 7.23 and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Ye that work iniquity. They want it their way, brother, says Christ. They want it their way. They can't handle God's way. And that's what I'm dealing with with the brethren today, brother, says Christ. And I always start with this guy right here. So don't act like I'm just pointing at everybody else and I'm innocent. 100% innocent in this. I'm pointing at everybody, starting with this man here. And our problem today in the body of Christ is we're getting pulled away from doing things God's way to doing things the flesh's way, the world's way, Satan's way. And this is just another example of them trying to pull you away from doing things God's way. We have God's word, we have his name, Jesus Christ, and Satan's trying to pull you away from it. And without saying it, this man's saying, if you don't know the Hebrew name for Jesus Christ, you're lost. You're lost.
There's only one name given under heaven given among men where we, whereby we must be saved. And if it's not Jesus Christ, we're all lost, brother says Christ. Because that's the name that I got saved by, Jesus Christ. That's the name that you got saved by. Evidently, it's not the name this guy got saved by. His response, because I threw that out there, his response. I know you just don't understand simple things. Brother says Christ, I just quoted scripture after 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 scripture that the name is Jesus Christ. You can't get any more simple than that. How much more evidence do you need? He rejects this book. He claimed, like, I'm one of you. I'm one of you. No, he's not. Don't lie to me. When I was newly saved, I could probably be deceived. That's why the Bible says through good words and fair speech is deceiving the hearts of the simple. I was simple when I was newly saved. I ain't simple anymore. And brother says, Christ, that's our push. That's my push for you. Don't be simple. You better know this book like you should know this book and stand for this book. Defend this book. Hide it in your heart and live it. And defend it. Stand, stand, stand. Don't faint. Don't falter. Okay. You just can't understand simple things. Wait, wait, wait. Here's another thing real quick. His first response, he started going into the Greek hardcore and everything that's complicated, especially since it's supposed to be a dead language. Because like I said, the original Hebrew is not the Hebrew that's spoken today. The language has changed over the years, just like our English language has changed over the years. Um, so he's going through that and going hard through that. That's supposed to be considered simple? See, his way is simple. My way is complicated. Trusting the book is complicated. But going to a language that's, that's, uh, that's not your own language, that's simple. You can't understand simple things. Really. No, it's all about God's not the author of confusion. You have the words of Father in English. I got no. I have God's perfect written word in English. See, he still gets. He still refuses to use the word perfect word in English because if it's perfect, we don't need anything else. You know how he's avoiding saying it's perfect. He just says, "Well, it's Father's word in English." You do not have the true names of anyone who wrote or was in His Word. See, now he's saying, if we have God's Word in English, then we've got all the names. But he's saying they're not the true names. Basically, he's saying we have God's Word in English, but it's worthless. It's utterly worthless. If you don't have the original Hebrew, if you don't have the original Hebrew, it's worthless. And when you just say, hey, this is God's Word, and you show them truth that this is God's perfect written Word... You just can't understand simple, th simple things. You just can't understand simple things. No, this man, his heart is hardened to the truth. He rejects the truth. You have the words of the Father in English. You don't have the true names of anyone who wrote or was in the words. Those you must seek. I have God's perfect written word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now here's the thing. We have the name Paul. Is the name Paul what's important? Or the word of God that he gave us through Paul? It's the words that mean something. Not his name. Yeah, we got Paul's name. Yeah, he's, he's, We always talk about him being one of the greatest preachers that ever lived. Defend, but he's the apostle to the Gentiles. Okay? He's the greatest apostle to the Gentile that ever lived. Well, he was the only apostle to the Gentiles. Okay? A little sarcasm. But he's the only Gentile, uh, pro, uh, apostle to the Gentiles. Amen? It's what he wrote that matters. See, this guy's putting more emphasis on people's names that wrote these books in the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, Timothy, uh, Silas. Um, Titus, Barnabas, trying to go through all these different names that we get in the Bible. He's putting no, it's not the words that mean anything, it's the names that mean everything. 
Oh boy, those you must seek. I have the true word of God. I have God. The Bible says, seek him while he may be found. Today he's found in the English King James Bible. Perfect written word. This is where you find Jesus Christ. This is where you find true plan of salvation today. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Now that's from the Old Testament, but we've got that. The Old Testament, Hebrew. The Old Testament, there was names. Mighty God, Jehovah. That's what they would call upon him with. Do we call upon him today that way and get saved? No. Today it's Jesus Christ. Okay. And here's the big thing. They always say this. Hey man, it's a free world. Do as you please. I, I watch people online when they're talking about what's going on in the world. I do watch what's going on in the world, brothers and Christ. I just don't think... <clears throat> there's no such thing, and I know I'm going to uh, upset some people, but truth upset, upsets people. <clears throat> brothers and Christ, there's no such thing as a uh, news, Christian news ministry. There's no such thing. Paul warned about things that will happen in the world and whatnot, and we keep our eyes open for the brethren. The Bible talks about our watching, when we're supposed to be watching. It's not to get distracted by what's going on in the world. It's to warn the brethren and encourage the brethren to stay standing, no matter what happens in the world, to stay standing, to exhort one another, to encourage one another. Keep up the good work. Stand, stand, stand. Don't faint, don't falter. You see what's going on in the world? I'm here for you, brother. I'm praying for you, brother. I'm here to help you spiritually. Prayer, the Word of God, physically and financially. We're here for one another. No matter what's going on in the world. Okay, we're watching the world to take care of the body of Christ. But a news ministry, there's no such thing in the Scriptures. Okay, there's no such thing in the Scriptures. And I'm watching, I'm getting on there and I'm watching some news, because I do. I watch some news to see what's going on in my hometown. Uh, the number one thing I always tell people is, when's the last time you actually tried to look at the local news to see what's going on in your own hometown? With the stuff that's going on around you that's going to affect you. Versus getting distracted by all this junk that's going on in the world and you, that's happening millions of miles away. I'm exaggerating, but thousands of miles away. You have no control over it. Okay. But I do watch it, and everything that they talk about with the sodomite, sodomite agenda that's going on hardcore, you know what their response is? It's a free country. You can do what you want over there. Uh, feminism. It's a free country. You can do what you want over there. Uh, fornication. Uh, all these sins the Bible calls sins. They always keep saying, it's a free country. You can do it. What does this guy say? He says, those you must seek, and then he puts dot, dot, dot. Hey, man, it's a free world dot, 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 do as you please. That's not the response of someone who loves you and wants to see you get saved and see you go to heaven. That's the sign of someone who was trying to deceive somebody, who's trying to deceive me, and realized it wasn't going to work. So then he's like, whatever. It's a free country, do what you want. That's the wrong response, brothers and Christ. It is not a free country. I don't want to go into it too much, because, you know, this video could get taken down. But I talked with some brethren when it comes to all these wickedness and sins that they keep saying it's a free country for here in America, that it's a free country, it's a free country. It was not protected under the Constitution and Bill of Rights. While the Constitution was in full effect and the Bill of Rights was in effect, there was anti-sodomite laws. There was anti-feminist laws. Femin feminism, there was a zero tolerance at one time in our country. While the Constitution was in full effect, there was a zero uh, tolerance for, for sodomy. It's not LGBT, it's sodomy. There was a zero tolerance for it. But their big push is, uh, it's a free country. Man, it's a free world. It's a free world. Trust me, he doesn't like my response. This was my final response. And he responded tons of times after this, but I stopped responding back. This was my final response, okay, to him. 1 Corinthians 6.20 1 Corinthians 6.20 For ye are bought with a price. I'm not free to choose what Bible I want to use. That's Satanism. That's Satan. I'm not free to do whatever I want whenever I want. 
I'm not free to be the final authority of my own self. For ye were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This book is God's perfect written word, and I'm commanded to study it. I'm commanded to hide it in my heart. I'm commanded to live it. I'm commanded to stand for it. I'm commanded to fight for it. And if need be, I'm commanded to die for it. No matter what the cost, if I'm commanded to lose for it. And people say, well, what does that mean lose? If you have to lose family members because you stand for this book, you lose family members. Wives, husband, children, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, grandparents, mother, uh, mother-in-law. Remember what Jesus said about bringing peace? He didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. His word divides and sets those who are saved apart from those that are lost. You were bought with a price. I'm not my own. I'm not free. I'm not, man, hey man, it's a free world. That's Satan's philosophy. That's not God's. I am free from the law of sin and death. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7.20 But I'm still not my own. I've been freed from the ultimate consequences of sin. I'm not going to go to hell when I die. I'm sealed into the day of redemption. But I'm still not my own. 1 Corinthians 7.20 let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayst be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Verse 23. Ye are bought with the price. Be not ye the servants of men. You were bought with a price. You're not your own. But people will get that and say, I'm a free man. I'm free. I can do whatever I want. No. You've been freed from this wicked world. This flesh is no longer in charge. The world's no longer in charge of you. Satan has no power over you. You were bought with a price. You're not your own. Right? Your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. That's where that verse comes in. You're not your, you were bought with a price. You're not your own. Okay, it's not a free world where I can just believe whatever I want to believe. That whole thinking, brothers and Christ, is leading a lot of people to hell. It's leading a lot of people to hell. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You can do whatever you want to do. It's a free world. It's a free country. Right? Now... Here's what I told him after I quoted those two scriptures. He says, Now, I will continue to fight for my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm His servant. I'm not my own. Okay. Now, I will continue to fight for my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in God's perfect written word in English, KJV. I know you do not like it when I quote God's word. Because he just said, everything you said is a lie. Everything you said is wrong. Sadly, you are incorrect on everything you have said. I put that in quotations, that that's what he said. But I am done. Either you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you will keep seeking the Redeemer's true name. And I quoted 2 Timothy 3, 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. We have the Savior's name, the Redeemer's name. Will you accept it? This man won't accept it. He doesn't want Jesus Christ. He rejects Jesus Christ. At that point, I had to say, what is it? Oh yeah, uh, it's that. And that's why I stopped it. Okay, I'm done. I'm not making any more comments. Because, brother says Christ, uh, Matthew 7, 6 says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. And I always tell people that we, it's, it's a physical thing, so you can get this thing in your head that if you keep trying to force someone to do what is right, they're going to wind up disappointing you and hurting you. But for what, when it comes to the Word of God, the biggest thing for this is, is when you keep casting your pearls before swine, you have people that ask questions just to ask questions. 
And what they're doing is they're waiting for you to make a mistake so they can rend you. You're trying to give truth, truth, truth. And like I said, we need to be long-suffering. If someone comes and tries to say, well, I believe in um, easy believism, you need to be patient and you need to say, okay, here's the truth. It's never faith alone. We're saved by God's grace, and this is how you find God's grace. You have to go through faith, faith in repentance, faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, and faith when it comes to prayer, praying to a God that you've never seen before. A God that before you get saved, you rejected. Oftentimes people say, I don't believe he exists. Atheists that get saved, before they got saved, they didn't believe in a God. They themselves were their own gods. Right? So you have people that will ask questions to ask questions. And they're waiting for you to slip up and make a mistake. And there's times where I've, I've gotten into it with people where I'm trying to give them the truth, I'm trying to give them the truth, and that I do make a mistake. I'm not perfect. And one of my answers, I make a mistake. And they pounce on that mistake and they'll rend you with it. The other thing they're waiting for is they'll keep asking question after question after question because they're not seeking truth. They're waiting to get a question that you can't answer. And if they find one question that you can't answer, that means you don't know everything. Therefore, you could be wrong on all the answers you've given. I could have answered a million questions. But that million and one question that I couldn't answer, that means everything is in question. And they're a warped mind. Okay? You get to that point when you realize that someone who's asking questions because they want to know the truth, keep giving them truth. You have people asking questions just to ask questions. They're trying to slip you up. They're trying to get you messed up. Uh, let them alone. Matthew 15, 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. This man doesn't want Jesus Christ. And like I said, he tried all these different tricks to try to deceive me. Oh, I'm one of you. Oh, yeah, I believe this is God's word. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. First, notice how he started out real quick. Notice how he started out with it's just Jesus that we need the Redeemer's name. And then when I showed him I have the Redeemer's name, notice how he came back and started using everybody's name. Then he's going to talk back, come back and say, well, um, the parables and the, and, the, and the Gospels, he didn't say this, but he would. this is the direction he's going. First, we need Jesus' name, the Redeemer, in the original Hebrew that doesn't exist. Then we need all, everybody's name that's ever mentioned in the original Hebrew. Next he's going to say, well, the parables get lost in translation. If we don't go back to the original Hebrew, you won't get the actual message. Even though he just said this has the message, that's where he's leading. Anything to get you away from this book. He's not a King James Bible believer. He's a liar and a deceiver. Okay. Let them alone. Let them alone. Like I said, I like to keep throwing scriptures out there and watch them go nuts and go crazy. But that's my flesh. And I need to get to the point where like God said, stop casting that which is holy, the holy scriptures. Pearls, talking about wisdom, the wisdom that God has given us. If they don't want it, they don't want it. Stop throwing it at them. Romans 16, 18 we read, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus, <coughs> Jesus Christ. But their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Okay. When I got saved and born again, truly saved and born again, I got brought to the Bible version issue. I had to get to the point where this is God's perfect, I don't know all of it, because I didn't hardly know any of it. This is God's perfect written word. I'm going to hold it, and I'm not letting it go. If someone tries to take it from me, you're not taking it from me. This is God's perfect written word. And I had to learn things all over again, Brother Sis Christ. When I got newly saved, I got taught a lot of false teachings. A lot of traditions of men as if it was the word of God. And I'm like, where is this at in Scripture? It's not there. I had to relearn things. And I had learned stuff all over. And I learned so much stuff that I never even was taught when I got saved and came to the knowledge that there's a perfect written word of God. This is my foundation. This is God's perfect. I'm not letting it go. Now, God... Please, Lord, show me the truth. And God did. 
God did. And those are the people that really have a hold on this book and know this book. Those who truly believe in it, they hold on to it and they won't let it go. I know some brethren where this sets up there, I don't know if you can see on there, it's just setting somewhere and it's gathering dust. And they PwC what either I say, uh, other men out there say, uh, Peter Ruckman, Brian Denlinger, uh, the ex-Catholics for Christ, uh, whatever. They're just out there, Sam Gibb, they'll, they'll PwC what he said, uh, they'll PwC what someone else says, but this is gathering dust. I don't want you PwC what I am saying. I want you to do the study for yourself, Brother Sis Christ, and have a, have a firm foundation like God has given me. And He's given you. This is the foundation. This is what you need to stand for. Not this. This. And when I line up, I've always said this, Brother Christ, when I line up with this book, it's because this book is right. And when I don't line up with this book, it's because this man right here is wrong. But this book is always right. You have a lot of, uh, uh, I want to say you have a lot of false teachers that claim to be Bible believers that will say the same thing, but they're always going against this book and they're always attacking this book. You have brethren that used to stand for this book and when they meant it, when they said this is the final authority, not this, they've strayed from it, they've become part of the falling away and they attack this book and now they're the final authority. But they still parrot this book is the final authority when it's not. Brothers of Christ, I mean it. This is the final authority, not me. I can slip up. I can make mistakes. And I do. And I do. Like I said, I had a brother correct me recently. And I'm still going through that study just to make sure that, you know, I, I, I believe I was wrong. And I'm still going through it, studying it, just to make sure that I can get it right so I don't make the same mistake again. Okay. So, uh... Just to let you know, this is how I dealt with somebody who came through and tried to push something that basically it's not just with the Yeshua. I know we titled it Yeshua, Yahshua, Yahweh. They're going to try to get you away from this book. Anybody who tries to come and argue with you on this book, they're trying to get you away from it. Whether they're trying to push easy believism and reject the true plan of salvation, where they come in and attack dispensational teaching, they come in and attack the true Godhead of the King James Bible, Okay, they uh, come in and uh, try to attack the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ, which includes the imminent return of Jesus Christ, looking for Jesus Christ every day. That's what it means by imminent return. Not that he's guaranteed to come back tomorrow, but that he might come back tomorrow. And we're supposed to live as if he could come back tomorrow. The Bible teaches that. And you've had brethren that turned on it. They've turned on this book. They haven't turned on me. They've turned on this book. They've turned on God. Okay. And so on and so forth. When you get into it with people and they start pulling you away from this book and they get you to start doubting this book, that's not someone you should be listening to. A better rendering would be, a better, I don't like that word that God chose, so I'm going to replace it with another word and then add my own definitions. Uh, I mean, and then add the definition to the new word that I just replaced God's word with. A Bible corrector. This guy here is a Bible corrector. He's a Bible doubter. He's a, Bi he's, a King, he's a King James Bible rejecter. Yeah, he claims to believe in it, but he rejects it. Stand, 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 brothers and sisters Christ. Stand, stand, stand. Don't faint, don't falter. Keep standing for this book, and like I said, when you realize you're dealing with someone who doesn't want the truth, you're done. You're done. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. Let them alone. Get back to your walk with the Lord. Get back to prayer. Get back to Bible reading. Get back to Bible studying. Get back to hiding God's Word in your heart and living it. So, Brother Jesus Christ, I'm praying for you. Keep praying for me. We had an ice storm that came through here recently. We've had a couple few good days. I'm trying to get back out there and get some videos back up. Um, praise the Lord for the, the wood stove. It's working great. Um, we haven't lost power yet, but we've had ice storms where we could lose power. The wind got really bad where there's a lot of limbs on the road, you know, fall, parts of trees that are falling on the road. Um, we had a good windstorm come through here. And like I said, when we have a windstorm come through here, the rain, because it doesn't get cold enough to snow, like stay cold enough, what happens is, is the wind comes through, drops the temperature 10 degrees, and it'll drop it below freezing, 
and it'll freeze the rain and we get ice. We get a hail and we get ice. Um, it does snow sometimes, rarely. I've been here five years and it snowed one winter. One or two winters. But it'll snow and then within a, f a few days to a week all that snow is melted. Because the temperature doesn't stay below freezing. It's that wind that brings it below freezing. So I've had power outages and everything. But uh, just keep praying. I'm praying for you, Brother Jesus Christ, in the winter that every, all the brethren can stay warm. Okay, we got food and raiment. Uh, I want to throw this out there again, Brother Jesus Christ, if you need help with anything. Uh, I got an email to this ministry. It's prayer and testimonies at uh, prayer and testimonies 2018 at outlook.com. Okay. I also got a P.O. box. Okay, if you want to write a letter. I haven't gotten a letter in a long time, but the box is still open. It's not that expensive um, to keep a box open. Uh, so I went ahead and tried to keep a box open just in case. Uh, I know there's some brethren overseas that will send me stuff every once in a while, and they'll need help, so I'll send them stuff, and I'll use that P.O. box. Um, but I'm praying for you, brother. Says Christ, keep praying for me. Okay, and pray for us in these last days that we keep standing and we don't faint and we don't falter. And when we do, because we do, brothers and Christ, I do, you do. And when we do, brothers and Christ, that God will use me, he'll use you. And through, like I said, the best way to exhort the brethren, the best way to correct a brethren, the best way to help a brethren get back up on his feet. You know what the Bible says? Deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow me, talking about Jesus Christ. The best way to do that is to use this to encourage brethren to get back on your feet. When you fail the Lord, get back on your feet. Okay. Get back to serving the Lord. No matter how bad that fall was, no matter how bad that fall was, you can God can get you back up. There might be still some consequences to that fall physically on this in this earth, but God can get you back up and get you back on the right path if you let Him. Okay, and we're, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we're supposed to be exhorting brethren. And I know I'm kind of being long-winded, forgive me, but brothers and sisters Christ, when we correct someone, what I'm seeing among the body of Christ, and you know who you are, you're not correcting brethren to build them back up. You're coming out with bitterness, with hate, with pride, and you're trying to destroy your brothers and sisters in Christ, just utterly destroy them. That's not how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be preaching truth to them. Take it or leave it. And our whole goal is when someone's in the wrong, when someone's going the wrong direction, someone's giving into the flesh, someone's failing the Lord, falling flat on their face, is to pick them back up, to build them back up. Let this conviction break them, the Word of God, and build them back up. And that's my prayer for the brethren, that those of us that have fallen, those of us that are straying, those of us that have given in a little bit here and there or a lot, that God will pick you back up and build you back up and set you on the right path. I'm not here to destroy anybody. God will take care of that. All right? So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.